the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered at an excavation site just south of Jerusalem. Archaeologists say those scrolls contain biblical texts and even documents that were stashed during a Jewish revolt against Rome during the second century. For 40 years, a lump of charcoal sat in a secure vault in Jerusalem. To the naked eye, it was nothing but useless debris, the tragic remains of a synagogue fire that burned nearly 2,000 years ago. Archaeologists were terrified to touch it because a single breath could turn it into dust. But inside that charred wreckage, a secret was waiting. It held words that no one had seen for centuries, locked away by fire and time. Then artificial intelligence did the impossible. It reached inside the ash without ever opening the box and rewrote history. The burned secret inside the ark. This was not just about reading an old letter. This was about solving a mystery that scholars argued over for generations. Deep inside the ruins of a Dead Sea synagogue, archaeologists found a scroll so badly burned it crumbled into powder at the slightest touch. For more than four decades, no one could read even a single letter. Then AI stepped in and rebuilt the writing line by line. And get this, when the text finally appeared, its message was nothing like what scholars expected. In the early 1970s, a team of Israeli archaeologists was working at En Gedi, a small oasis village on the western side of the Dead Sea. En Gedi was not just some random outpost. It had fresh springs, palm trees, and a long Jewish history. It was a thriving town with a large synagogue at its center. But by the time the modern diggers arrived, the synagogue was a ruin. The stone walls still trace the outline of the prayer hall, and the floor preserved parts of a colorful mosaic carpet. For the people who once lived there, this building was the heart of the community. But a sudden violent fire in the 6th or 7th century changed everything. The burned beams and the layer of ash across the floor told a story of total destruction. When the archaeologists reached the western wall, they found the Holy Ark, the cabinet where the Torah scrolls were kept. On a day in May of 1970, the team opened that ark. Behind the stone and plaster, they expected the remains of scrolls, but what they actually saw looked more like pieces of burned wood. Inside the ark were several lumps of material, completely black, crushed, and shiny from burning. These were not clean rolls of leather. They looked like charcoal you would use for a barbecue. Every time someone tried to lift one, tiny flakes broke off and fell away. Even so, the team quickly realized these were not random bits of wood. The shape and the layering pointed to one thing, these were Torah scrolls, handwritten copies of the Hebrew Bible. But right now they were silent, locked in a tomb of carbon. A four-decade mystery. The archaeologists faced a very simple and harsh choice. The science of caring for old objects was not as advanced as it is today. If they tried to cut the scroll open by hand, they would almost certainly destroy it. If they left it alone, it would stay intact. But no one would ever know what was written inside. They chose to save the object rather than sacrifice it. They carefully lifted the largest burned lump, supported it so it would not collapse, and sent it to storage in Jerusalem. There it sat inside a box inside a vault. Conservators checked on it now and then, but no one tried to read it. For more than four decades, the text was seemingly lost to history. To understand why this mattered so much, you have to look at the bigger picture. Just 20 miles north, the famous Dead Sea Scrolls had been found in caves at Qumran. Those scrolls showed that 2,000 years ago, there were many different versions of the Bible in circulation. Some matched the text we use today, but others were different. Scholars were desperate to know which version was inside the En Gedi scroll because it sat in a mysterious time gap between the Dead Sea Scrolls and the medieval Bibles we use now. But for 40 years, the En Gedi scroll was just a black paperweight. That quiet finally began to change in the early 21st century when computer scientists started asking a bold question. Instead of cutting the scroll open, could they look through it from the outside? Seeing through the fire. Hospitals used scanning machines to look inside the human body, and conservators wondered if the same idea could work here. To test it, they turned to a high-powered micro-CT scanner. This machine works like a medical x-ray, but is tuned for small, solid objects. It takes thousands of thin pictures as the object rotates, building a three-dimensional block of data. The team placed the En Gedi scroll inside. The machine sent a strong x-ray beam through the charcoal. When the scan was finished, the computer held a 3D model of the interior. But here is the catch. 
The curator still had no idea if any ink would show up. At first, all they saw was a cloud of gray tones, but when they adjusted the contrast, something incredible happened. The parchment absorbed some x-rays, but the ink, which contained metal, absorbed much more. That difference showed up as brighter lines in the scan. The ink was still there. The job then passed to William Brent Seals and his team at the University of Kentucky. He wanted to do inside the computer what no one could risk doing in real life, virtually unwrap the scroll. His team wrote software to trace the layers of the scroll as they twisted and curved inside the lump. Imagine trying to trace the layers of a burned onion without peeling it. That is what the code had to do. Once the software mapped a single layer, it painted the ink density onto that virtual surface. Then the computer mathematically flattened the image like pressing a crumpled sheet of paper until it lies smooth. With the N. Getty scroll, the process worked so well that they recovered clear text from five complete wraps of the animal skin. The words that should not exist. What appeared on the screen made everyone stop in their tracks. The final view showed two columns of Hebrew writing. The letters were tiny, less than one-tenth of an inch tall, but they were sharp and clear. To make them even better, the team used artificial intelligence to detect patterns, helping the software distinguish between random noise and real ink strokes. After years of silence, the researchers finally had a flat image. Instead of a black, useless mass, they saw neat, horizontal lines of letters. The computer scientists sent the pictures to the scholars, and what they found was shocking. The first clear words were not a strange hymn or a lost prayer. They were instructions. The charred scroll turned out to be the opening of the book of Leviticus, the third book of the Torah. It detailed the rules for burnt offerings, exactly how to bring a bull or sheep to the altar. The text had no vowels and no chapter numbers, which was a huge clue. The style of handwriting suggested it was written sometime in the 1st or 2nd century AD, while radiocarbon dating placed the physical material between the 3rd and 4th centuries. Either way, this was the oldest Hebrew scroll found since the Dead Sea Scrolls. But here is the real twist. Many experts expected the text to be different. They thought that like the scrolls from Qumran, this ancient copy would have variations. Maybe different words, different phrasing, or extra sentences. What they found was the complete opposite. When they laid the En Gedi text next to the standard medieval Hebrew Bible used today, it matched perfectly. It was identical. It is not that simple, though. This finding was a massive deal because it meant that the text of the Bible had been locked in and kept stable much earlier than anyone thought. For almost 2,000 years, scribes had copied this text with such extreme care that not a single letter had changed in this passage. The burned scroll proved that the version of the Bible we read today is the exact same one the people of that village were reading before their synagogue burned down. Unlocking the Buried Library Once that burned scroll from En Gedi finally spoke, it did more than just recite a few verses of Leviticus. It raised a massive, tantalizing question that rippled through the archaeological world. For 45 years, that artifact had sat in a box, resembling nothing more than a charred piece of charcoal, completely silent and seemingly destroyed. When digital imaging finally peered inside its layers to reveal the earliest Hebrew text of the Pentateuch ever found since the Dead Sea Scrolls, the implications were staggering. If a fragile, fused lump of carbon could reveal this much, what else might be hidden in the dusty vaults of museums around the world? The focus of this question has shifted to the most significant invisible library on Earth, the buried texts of Herculaneum in Italy. When Mount Vesuvius erupted 79 AD, it didn't just freeze Pompeii in time, it unleashed a pyroclastic surge that engulfed the neighboring wealthy seaside town of Herculaneum. There it buried a massive villa, thought to belong to the father-in-law of Julius Caesar, in nearly 100 feet of hot volcanic ash. Inside this villa resided a treasure trove unique in the ancient world, a library filled with hundreds, perhaps thousands, of papyrus scrolls. For centuries after their rediscovery in the 1700s, these scrolls were a source of immense frustration. The heat of the eruption had carbonized them instantly, turning organic papyrus into blocks of carbon that looked exactly like lumps of coal. They were incredibly brittle. Early explorers and treasure hunters desperate to read them tried to pry them open physically. It was a tragedy of archaeology. 
In their attempt to uncover history, they destroyed it, leaving behind a trail of crumbled dust and fragmented scraps. They eventually realized that to touch these scrolls was to erase them. But recently, the paradigm shifted. The Vesuvius Challenge launched a global race using the same virtual unwrapping technology pioneered on the Injeti scroll to let artificial intelligence hunt for ink inside these carbonized rolls. The challenge was immense because unlike the Ingeti scroll, which used metallic ink that shone brightly under x-rays, the Herculaneum scrolls were written with carbon-based ink on carbonized paper. To the human eye and even to standard x-rays, there is almost no contrast. It is black on black. However, high-resolution particle accelerators helped map the 3D structure of the scrolls, and machine learning algorithms were trained to spot the subtle, microscopic changes in the texture of the papyrus where the ink sat, a texture known as crackle. In early 2024, the impossible happened. Three young competitors, a global team of students and researchers, won a $700,000 grand prize for successfully training AI to read the Greek text inside a completely sealed scroll. What they revealed was not a mundane list of taxes or grains, but a philosophical work by the Epicurean writer Philodemus. The text discussed music, food, and the senses, debating whether the scarcity of a good brings more pleasure than its abundance. It was a human voice theorizing about the good life reaching out from across two millennia of silence, and that is putting it lightly. We are standing on the edge of a new era of digital resurrection. The Villa of the Papyri is the only library from the classical world that has survived to the modern day, and we have likely only scratched the surface of its collection. There is a very real possibility that lost plays of Sophocles, poems of Sappho, or missing books of Roman history are sitting in those carbonized lumps, waiting to be read. The success at Ingeti and Herculaneum proves a profound truth. Fire does not always erase history. Sometimes it just encrypts it. And now for the first time, we have the key to unlock those secrets. If a scroll hidden in a burning ark 2,000 years ago can survive to speak to us today, what other lost histories are sitting in museum basements right now, waiting for the right algorithm to find them? Are we sitting on a mountain of lost knowledge that we just haven't scanned yet? Smash that like button if you want to see more ancient mysteries solved by technology, and do not forget to subscribe so you do not miss the next discovery.